Okay, um, we did the national military cemetery here for the Nigeria capital Buda along um, Airport Road and um, to see the atmosphere here that that of um, pain, sorrow, um, family of Jolokwe uh, Arochile don't come here. Um, the governor of Kogi State also did here. Um, if you see the Faces of the people here and that of Pense, 24 year old Nigerian, the first female helicopter combat pilot where Nigeria produced, ever produced, died. So you see the atmosphere here for the people where come from, the, even the mood, even the weather today, show how gloomy, how sad the pain, the death of this young flying officer did. Not only for the family, but also for the Air Force and people they say uh, this is a very great shock to them and they hope say uh, the family of this young girl will oh, oh God repeat comfort. So it's a painful day, a day of loss, not only for the Arotiles, but also for Nigeria where produced this finest helicopter um, pilot and today um, is flying her flying cover her stars just cut short. According to um, the preliminary investigation where the Air Force gave out, they say that uh, he died of trauma of, because of the bleed where happened when he did the accident. When his classmate did see him, they believe him. He said they won't join him. So they, they be, they, their car where they carry him hit him and he gets accident for her head. So um, we did here now, dignitaries, they come in before, before you know the event goes start. But um, we'll give a latest story of what they happen for here. But we go tell and say the mood no be easy one. People day here, plenty of people they cry, people they mourn, a sad day for the Air Force, for the military, uh, the Nigerian military as a whole, and also for the entire Nigerian people. Uh, many people don't react on top her dead. Uh, you can see, say, um, the reverends are they also there for grand here, where they go see how they go bless her before the, her remains then go put her down. And so, for that the burial be this for the national cemetery here for the military cemetery here for the Nigerian capital. Um, a really very sad day. 24 year old flying officer with bright colors, with bright stars, but we see all that cut short within a twinkle of an eye. For other countries and other um, parts of the world, you can see this kind of person grow to become one of the best where they engage, but we see say her life they cut short because of an accident. Now, uh, many Nigerians don't they talk about her death and then you go see how people gather from the National Assembly, um, representatives from the state government, representative, her classmates, her family, all of them they here and here they still they celebrate them. So her life here, but not only they celebrate her death, but the fact that even when she did small and she did alive, her living was celebrated as one of the first where don't achieve what she achieved. We see how Nigerians celebrate her. We see 
how uh, everybody been celebrated and even till her death she still they celebrated and so now all the beauty of Arotile um, the Air Force say even though now her short stay now 2017 she been joined them say the work where she don't do they very outstanding they praise her work and now one of Nigeria's shining star and they say they come here today to come honor her so um, now waiting they happen for here today be that we see the Air Force Oga sit down for here he's saying a great boss I'm not getting close. Now the Air Force or Gabi this, he sent a great loss to the force. Um, he one of those who I don't praise this young girl. He's saying one of the shining bright stars when Nigeria don't get. Her loss is saying are waiting. Um, the force go mourn for a very long time. And so you see how people day here, everybody day in a shocking mood. Everybody see they mourn on top how she carried die. Um, the minister, the State Governor of Kogi State, the Hayabello, still also day here. Um, she don't, he don't come from all the way from Kogi State to among one of the very best where the state don't produce. And he said that um, that painful death, nine be this. He don't put statement up to um, to make the family take heart. But he stay here. He saying come here today to come witness the final rite and burial of this young girl. Um, governor. Um, we know say this is a very great loss for the people of Kogi State. What thing you get to tell Nigerians why they watch through this channel today? Thank you very much for talking with us and so you see people day here um, for the sensitivity of their family we no go talk to any member of their family for now but now this now her sisters loved ones where I see her grow where I watch her develop where I watch her become waiting she won't be her family members her sisters brothers uh, all of them come here today and a painful one and then um, you see say they know, they, 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 they pray, say, um, Nigerians, they pray, say, God will console them, but not be easy one for the family. The mother and father no come, but the siblings are here. Um, people, all Nigerians, people from every walks of life, they're here to mourn with them. A very great loss for them. So the Nigerian military, uh, the Air Force also, their military base also, they here. They play cool music for, to see how the thing they go. Say you come here, come on today. Um, now, where you day here, how you feel about the loss of this great Nigerian? Members of the National Assembly here present. The Chief of Defence Staff, very senior officers, distinguished invited guests. Sorry, we did sorry for the, the loss of this on our daughter. I may God comfort you. The guests of honor, 
Honorable Minister of Defense, Major General Bashir Magashi retired. Yeah, the Honorable Minister, ably represented by the Permanent Secretary, Mr. Don Land, and Zachary. these are some of it's not some of um, the colleagues, and so many of them also come here to come witness what they happen here today. The Chairman Senate Committee on the Air Force, distinguished Senator. Okay, um, as we know, the event don't start in earnest, and um, people don't gather here already. Distinguished and honorable members, mothers, of the fathers, children. Um, Madam, uh, as, present, as a woman, the and the feat where this young girl don't achieve just 24 years, you see how the bright star. That's if one star where they shine and they just cut off like that. As you did here today, what did they run through your mind? Army Medal, the Chief Warner, the Chief of the Air Staff, Air Marshal Sadiq Baba Abubakar, Distinguished Flying Staff, the representatives of the Chiefs of Army and Naval Staff. The directors from the Ministry of Defense, the Chief of Defense Intelligence, heads of government agencies and senior government officials here present, branch chiefs from the Defense and Service Headquarters. Okay, so you did hear mothers here saying a very great loss to Nigeria and also not only Nigeria, others saving for Africa because not names like these. Suppose Just make the continent go high. So um, the event don't start. Uh, we'll see how people the gather for Sarami here at the national um, military uh, symmetry here along the airport road for Nigerian capital. And so um, at the, at the event they Arotile, go home, who died on the 14th of July 2020 at the age of 24. I shall be assisted by Flight Lieutenant G.A. Tonga. On behalf of the organizing committee for this event, I warmly welcome you most sincerely to the National Military Cemetery Abuja venue for the burial proceedings. May I, at this juncture, invite so, the burial um, party. So, at the grave where they will lay her bodies. The um, cast of honor, sir, the so they don't get ready, they don't get everything ready. Um, so just refreshing our memory, we know say um, Arotile died on the 14th of July 2020 after some of um, her classmates where they drive, they won't greet her, knock her down, and she hit her head for pavement, which can cause trauma and bleeding. After they carry her, go hospital, she knows if she survive them. Um, her death don't create so many um, reactions from Nigerians, both on social media and even uh, on traditional media. We don't hear so many persons um, don't cry about her death. Uh, so they also call for investigation. Recently, the um, Air Force been do their investigation. They bring out their preliminary investigation, say no wuru day for her death and that um, those her classmates who have been committed that they don't already there for police custody and also um, they don't allow the matter into police hand to investigate the matter
Nigeria's best, Nigeria's hero, heroine. Now waiting, many Nigerian call her. They call her superhero. The finest when Nigeria forgets. The last case. <laughs> Okay. 
Princess of Anasa, distinguished invited guests, ladies and gentlemen, let from the corridor is the faith service. To officiate with her head of the program is the director of chaplaincy, the pastor, group captain, Reverend D.B. Bami. May I now invite group captain, Reverend D.B. Bami, to kick start with faith service. Special guest of honor, all invited guests, the chief mourner, the chief of the air staff, the family members of our dead sister and colleague. I greet you all in Jesus' name. We we'll bring our condolences from all the Directorate of Religious Affairs, Nigerian Air Force, on this very challenging, try and difficult moment that we found ourselves. May the good Lord, in his infinite mercy, strengthen and comfort each and every one of us, even at this point in time. May the Lord bless us. Shall we pray? Our Father and our God, we are so grateful unto you for such an occasion that it pleases you for us to gather. Not a moment of celebration, but a moment of pain and sorrow, a moment of heavy that except you, Lord, no one can comfort your children. We ask of you this moment that you reveal your greatness in the Thanking our sister and our daughter and our colleague. It's a difficult thing for us to comprehend, but you know all. And we ask of you, Lord, that you take control over your children. Thank you, gracious and eternal Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. With the assistance of the choir, we shall be singing the hymn, which is here in our program, Congregational Hymn. And S to Nine seven. If you wouldn't mind, we can be on our feet.
Isaiah 57. The righteous perish and no one ponders in it, yet in his heart. Devout men are taken away and no one understands that the righteous are taken away to be spared from evil. Those who walk uprightly enter into peace. They find rest as they lie in death. Father, thank you for your word. Glorify yourself this moment in Jesus' name. When the righteous are living or gone, when the righteous are no more, one of the hard things to comprehend in life is when hopes and expectations are dashed or cut off. It's always a devastating time because the future becomes bleak, discouragement, pain, and hopelessness set in. The prophet Isaiah cried out on the fact that nothing seems to bother the society when those who hold the promise for tomorrow are vanishing and no one seems to bother or worry. The prophet describes them as righteous, men and women that are godly, Men and women that are respectful. Men and, are wo and women that are committed to doing good. Men and women that live a godly life. Men and women that cheat no one. Men and women that kills no one. Men and women that are disciplined and not corrupt. Men and women that are eager and committed to doing the, thing, the right thing. He equally describes them as merciful. Those who chose the life of others positively, compassionate, help us, give us. These are the caliber of people dying. People that are, the society need them, need them most. If such people are living, what kind of people are left behind? The wicked, the drug addicts, the rapists, the murderers, bandits, Boko Haram. Suicide bombers and kidnappers, robbers, thieves, and unproductive people, and so on. It is said, the, fruit the fruitful trees are cut down by death, and the burying are still left to cumber or occupy the ground. What use is of the burying? However, the lament of the prophet is not just about their departure, but the action and the reaction, response, and the expression of the society when such things are happening. The silence, an inept attitude, laxity, carelessness, restraint, and total short of unconcern over the plight of losing the righteous, the merciful, are the greatest undoing of the society to the departed and to the society. Brethren, how much show of displeasure and action taken by individuals or general society when the good, the promising, the gifted, the talented, and the God-fearing people are existing. When evil is still striving, wickedness is of the increase, indiscipline all over. Godlessness is the order of the day, and everyone is turning his face away as if nothing is happening. When a family or a community or society looks the other way around, when our godly, righteous, gifted and talented, intelligent and patriotic ones are going, the family or such community or nation is heading for destruction and collapse. God's wrath comes upon such a society or nation with great calamity. However, the passage we read describes their departure, the departure of such people, as have been taken away from evil that is coming, when it is just coming. It is also describing them as they are out of the reach of evil. The righteous man, who well he lived, walk in his right uprightness, when he dies, enter into peace and rest in his bed. 
it is called the death of peace. The grave is a bed of rest to all God God's people. Rest from all their labors according to Revelation chapter number 12, 14 verse 13. The more weary they are, the more welcome will that be their rest according to Job chapter number 13 verse 17 to 19. The bed, the, the bed is made of darkness, but that makes it the more quiet. It is the bed out of which they shall rise, refresh in the morning of the resurrection. That is what we look for when we shall meet again. Sister, Tolu Tope, I mean. The challenge of the demise of the righteous. The painful challenge of the demise of the righteous, the merciful, and the good people is not about their innocency in the death, nor the wickedness meted on them in dying, but two things. The place they occupied in the society becomes vacant and wicked takes over. Who fills the gap of Arotili? Who fills the vacuum of such a vibrant, young, committed, understanding, and passionate and patriotic officer? It is also their positive impact in the society is no more and wicked strikes. Brethren, thus Jeremiah said, he looks for on the street to look for godly people and they are nowhere to be found in Jeremiah chapter 1 verse chapter 5 verse 1. And the psalmist cried out in search of the godly people. The disappearance of the good means the appearance of the bad. The decrease of the good and merciful means increase of evil. The departure of the life savers means the arrival of life takers. Oh, Arotele, the Deborah of our time, a woman with passion, a lady with exceptional courage and determination, commitment and dedication with excellent and pure spirit to fight evil and wickedness, to see peace and tranquility reign in a nation that is full of chaos and terrorism, and all form of insecurity. Now she's gone. Oh, evil, wicked world that strives to see and rejoice in evil and wickedness. Arotele is one among the thousands and millions that have been buried, young children, adult men and women that will have fought and fought and fought our society of evil and all forms of vices we are struggling with. No wonder, right from childhood, this young girl never thought of anything but taking the challenge where men, where men are afraid to say, look, I'm going to take not only the service, not only flying, but I want to fight evil from the air. And she's no more. The question is, who takes over? When the good are no more, brethren, those are pains and tears, even as we express from the day this dark cloud fell on our head when the news came that our rotilage is gone. Those are tears and sorrow and laments called for action. That is innocent, young, promising young girl will die at the prime of her career. Will her dreams and goals be achieved by those of us lamenting today? Will it be an action by our leaders and young generation to raise other fighters of evil with exceptional drive and patriotism from the female folk to carry on from where the unoccupied vacuum created by the demise of our young record-setting flying officer Arotele. Unless and until there's an action taken, our lament and our, and our cry and our tears amount to nothing but hypocrisy and lies. I commend the chief of the air staff 
for taking the boldness, resisting any destruction or gender, to put in resources towards making the dreams of Arotele to reality in her lifetime. Oh, my wife will say, when she was going to school, her father will say, I'm not going to pay your school fees because you are a woman you are going to marry. You'd have no use. Today is my wife that supports the, the house. It takes a man with courage and boldness to invest in a dream and in a vision of the people that are looking forward for a great future. I call on our political, military, and religious leaders, parents and captains of industry, to take a deliberate steps on putting hope to the weak and making the dreams of young patriotic citizens of the female extraction a reality in the society that sees nothing in young women than sex, rape, and abandonment. Hmm. This is the order of the day. This is the cry of our society. That when men and young women are rising up with such dreams, we see nothing, but we see tools to be used and abandoned. Here is a young woman that breaks the record of our nation. In Africa, I was searching and I discovered that even America recorded the first fighter pilot from the women folk in the 90s with all their decades of advancement until the year 2001 or 2011 for South Africa to have one female black pilot combat fighter pilot. Brethren, the prophet says, the righteous are perishing, and no one ponders. It's one thing for us to cry, but after this, what next comes? Will our young people have the hope, have the privilege, have the, 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 the atmosphere, have the platform to distinguish themselves? Rather, unfortunately, corruption, selfishness, Self-centeredness covers our society. Brethren, the only mercy that God will have for us is when our tears, our cry today, will turn to become an action that will raise men and young women like Arotoli that will defend this nation. Even as we cry, what is the effect of our cry? What is the effect of our cry? Brethren, the providence of God removing good people like Arotole in the space of this world. The righteous as this world perish, they are gone and their place knows them no more. Piety never exempts them from the arrest of death, no persecuting times. The most righteous are most exposed to the violence of bloody men. That is why the psalmist cried in Psalm 12 verse 1, where are they? Righteousness delivers from the sting of death and not from the stroke of it. That is why people like Arotele will go. They are said to perish because they are utterly removed from us and express the great loss which this world sustained by the removal of them. Not that their death is their undoing but it often proves the undoing of our places where they live and where useful. Merciful men are taken away. Good men for whom some will even dare to die. Those are removed that could be worst spared. The fruitful, the fruitful trees are cut down by death and the burying are still to come back. Brethren, I ask of us, can we nurture the fruitful tree? Can we nurture the full fruit tree? Shall we rise to our feet, even as we sing the closing hymn? Then I'll call the director, Catholic, to come and pray.
the second stanza. Especially the parents of our departed colleague. Be merciful in cleaning our tears. Replace our sorrow with comfort and solace. Grant us the peace we need in this country and from all kinds of terrorism and disturbance of peace. We salute your courage, Almighty God, in handling this nation. For many things are happening and we cannot understand. When we believe you know everything, and at the proper time you will answer us. Hear our prayers. Grant a place of repose eternally in heaven for our daughter and our colleague. Grant all the consolation we need now, that now and forevermore you will always take your place, and we will be obedient with submissive minds and hearts to your eternal will. Grant us consolation and grant us your peace. We make this prayer through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Okay, now the time for our classmate to read. So we will take on a close to the end. I am flying off Sir J.A. Chuku and I shall be reading the citation of my late classmate and friend, Flying of Sir Chululope Uluwatoi Sierra Arotile. 
Flying of Sotolule Kwe Oluwato in Sierra Arutule was born on the 13th of December 1995 to the family of Mr. and Mrs. Akitude Arutule in Kaduna. Flying of Sotolule Kwe Oluwato in Sierra Arutule hailed from Ijumu local government area of Kogi State. She attended Air Force Primary School, Kaduna, from year 2000 to year 2005, and Air Force Secondary School, Kaduna, from year 2006 to year 2011. She was enlisted into the Nigerian Defense Academy, Kaduna, as a member of 64th Regular Corps on the 22nd of September 2012. She was commissioned into the Nigerian Air Force as a pilot officer on the 16th of September 2017. Flying officer Arosile held a Bachelor of Science in Mathematics from the Nigerian Defense Academy. She was named as the first ever female helicopter pilot in the Nigerian Air Force on the 15th of October 2019, after completing her flying training in South Africa. She had logged about 400 flying hours. She held a commercial pilot license and also underwent tactical flying training on the August 109 power attack helicopter in Italy. She introduced the newly acquired August 109 power attack helicopter to the present Commander-in-Chief of the Armed Forces of Nigeria during the induction ceremony at Eagle Square in Abuja on the 6th of February, 2020. Tragically, Flying of Sarutile died on the 14th of July, 2020, at the age of 24. Until her death, she was single and her hobbies were praying, reading, and listening to music. We had gentle to rest in peace. Okay, so her classmates just read her citation mm -hmm. and we see who she be. So Distinguished invited guests, ladies and gentlemen, having listened to the citation of the late young officer, may I invite the representative of the family of our late colleague, Mrs. Damilola Adeboe, for a tribute. Mrs. Damilola. So now, now her sister won't talk, and um, she going to talk about her younger sister' life, and which them will miss about her and who she really be. Well, Thank you. On behalf of the entire academic family. I would like to first of all appreciate God Almighty for His grace and benevolence for giving us to look by as a daughter, a sister, and a friend. I would also like to express my sincerest gratitude to the Nigerian Armed Forces, particularly the Nigerian Air Force, for their impact, training, and expertise, which set an excellent platform for Tolulokwe. Uluwatoin Sarah Arutile to outshine her peers today. Because of their trust and investment, Tolulokwe showed exemplary skills too difficult to emulate. As a child, Tolulokwe had always dreamed of flying a plane. At that age, her, inspirations, her aspirations were glory. But today, we can gladly all testify to the impact she has made, 
not only in the Nigerian Air Force, but among family members, friends, colleagues, and the entire nation. So Lokwe aside work, loved God, and his love was second to none. She always prayed for herself, family, friends, and even people she barely knew. She was de a determined, hardworking, godly, and extremely focused person in everything she did. She was passionate about God, family, and work, and was able to wisely separate or merge them appropriately. Finally, I want to thank the Chief of Air Staff Air Marshal Sadiq Abubakar, our Chief Mourner, and the entire officers, airmen, air women of the Nigerian Air Force. You will always remain treasured members of our Kenyaritilis family. Your goodwill, prayers, condolences, and assistance through this difficult period will always be remembered. To the entire nation who mourn with our family and continue to show us love, we are sincerely grateful. May God bless the Nigerian Air Force, the Armed Forces of Nigeria, and the Federal Republic of Nigeria. Thank you. Okay, her sister just talked briefly about her, about how she liked God, about how she be a focused person, about her dream to fly even when she be small picking and this she don't demonstrate as how she don't be one of the finest combat, uh, combat helicopter pilot when Nigeria don't get so uh, many day here today they just come here to mourn and to to condole with the family um, the whole thing here the, the atmosphere is still very gloomy anger for the way where she carried her. Let me Many don't describe her as uh, Nigeria, pride of Nigeria, of of and Air others Star don't describe Air her Star as Star one of the very best where Nigeria go get. Have, have vacuum already during the film, the Air Force or Ghana 9 day to talk. Uh, they enter the podium now to go give the whole speech now. The guest of honor, the Honorable Minister of Defense, Major General Bashir Magashi, retired, who is ably and appropriately represented by the Permanent Secretary, Minister of Defense, Mr. Sadi Zakari, Your Excellency, the Executive Governor of Kogi State, Al Haji Yahya Bello, and his wife, Mrs. Rashida Bello. The Chairman Senate Committee on Air Force, Distinguished Senator Balana Naala, the Chairman House Committee on Air Force, Honorable Sewu Koko, Distinguished and Honorable Members of the National Assembly and Kogi State House of Assembly here present, Honorable Minister of Women Affairs. Then Colin Allen, the Honorable Minister of, of Humanity, Disaster Management and Social Development, Ajia Sadia Umar Farouk, Chief of Defense Staff, General A.D. Oloni Shaki, Representatives of the Chief of the Army Staff and Chief of Naval Staff, Directors for Ministry of Defense, Heads of government agencies and senior government officials, branches from Air Force and Service Headquarters, Air Officer Commanding, Air Training Command, senior military officers, both serving and retired, members of the Arotile family, distinguished invited guests, gentlemen of the press, 
Ladies and gentlemen, it is with a very heavy heart and a deep sense of loss that I stand here today to welcome you all to this burial ceremony and to bear the hearts of the Nigerian Air Force as we lay, the rest, lay to rest the remains of a national heroine a daughter and a highly impactful officer, late line officer, Tolulupe Arotile. I must confess that even at this moment, the Nigerian Air Force is still in possible shock and grief on this loss because it is the loss of a mentee whom the Nigerian Air Force has so much confidence in and our expectations have been cut short. As a combat helicopter pilot for several years, I can tell you that this young and confident first female combat helicopter pilot in the history of the Nigerian Air Force braved so many odds to get to where she was before her demise. As a service, we had so much expectation for Tolu which she was already living up to with ease. Though she is no longer with us, I must say that her short stay with us was highly impactful. She carried out her assignments both on ground and in the air with a high level of professionalism, commitment, and confidence. Accordingly, she contributed immensely to the decimation of national subversive, subversive elements across all theaters of operation, most especially in the Northwest and North Central Axis. The death of Flying Officer Tolu Lupe Arotile has affected us all in one way or the other. Consequently, today I condole myself and the Nigerian Air Force as a whole. I equally express my sincere condolences to the Arotile family, the entire women folk whom she represented, as well as the president and the good people of Nigeria, whose sovereignty she fought earnestly to protect. To the Arotile family, I know Nigerians everywhere are praying for you as we shoulder this heavy burden of grief. May time is the same pain of today, and please note that the entire nation shares this grief with you. There can be no better consolation than the knowledge that the nation grieves with you on the loss of this shiny, amiable, and patriotic Nigerian who bet the supreme of our service to our fatherland. Tolu Lupe, while you fulfill the long dream of becoming a pilot, we could only scratch the surface of our collective dream as a service for you. You remain comforted by the peace which only God grants us all at this moment and at all times. From God we came, and to him alone we shall all return. Your memory will remain indelibly marked in our hearts each time we remember you. Thank you for adding so much value towards our contribution to national security, even though for a short time. As you go to your final resting place, may the Lord be with you and be assured that the Nigerian Air Force and indeed the nation will remain ever grateful to you for your meaningful contributions and dedication. Continue to rest in the bosom of the Almighty till we meet again. We will miss you dearly. That was the remark by the chief mourner, the chief of the air staff.
Masha Sadiq Baba Abu Bakar. Talk to me, talk to me. I'm opening up. Talk to me. The guest of honor, sir, distinguished invited guests, ladies and gentlemen, it is now time for the presentation of the national colors next of kin of the deceased by the chief of the air staff. Distinguished invited guests, ladies and gentlemen, it is a tradition in the military that once a military personnel passes on, the family of the deceased is presented with the national colors in appreciation and recognition of the sacrificial service rendered to the nation by the deceased while alive. This morning, the Chief of the Air Staff will be making the presentation. May I now invite the Regimental Sergeant Major, 053 Headquarters Nigerian Air Force Camp, Warrant Officer Hussein Y, to prepare to hand over the national colors to the Commander 053 Headquarters Nigerian Air Force Camp, Air Commodore Simon Peters, for onward passage to the Chief of the Air Staff. Accordingly, I will also humbly request the Chief of Administration, Air Vice Marshal M.A. Idris, to appropriately hand over the national colors to the next of kin of the late flying Oscar. The national colors is now being handed over to the Regimental Sergeant Major 053 Headquarters Nigerian Air Force Camp, Warrant Officer Hussein White, who will proceed to hand over to the Commander 053 Headquarters Nigerian Air Force Camp, Air Commodore S. Peter. I now most respectfully request the Chief Mona, the Chief of the Air Staff, to kindly step forward and uh, receive the national colors for presentation to the family of the deceased. The Chief of the Air Staff. Thank you, sir. To the family of the deceased, once again, please accept our deepest condolences. May I pray, students, distinguished invited guests, ladies and gentlemen, at this 
time to kindly rise as we observe the one minute silence. Okay. <coughs> No, they see me quick. When they leave, you can just come from May the soul of Philip's final class, Philip of the Arochile, rest in perfect peace. May they please be seated. Next on the program is the lowering of the casket. At this juncture, may I request uh, the clergy to please take hold while the pallbearers proceed to lower the casket. Members of the immediate family are please requested to join in paying their last respect to the deceased and for emphasis in line with the COVID-19 protocol observance, we strictly crave the indulgence of um, the participants to be restricted to the eight members of the family yes. that are already seated. The body of our colleague is soon be lowered to the mother earth. It is written in the Holy Scriptures that from God's return and to God's we shall return. Our departed police have come and fulfilled the mission of God. She came, she saw, she saw her. She please. She lets the footprints of the signs of time within her grip and captain stay on earth. Reverend, where are those things? No, no, we're not yeah, in between. Where does it? Yeah, the family members, know if we hold their tears, um, her sisters, or hold their hands together in tears, their eyes weeping for their loved ones, for their sister, where they just want to live to rest. Um, this is a very emotional moment for the cemetery now, as they lower her into the grave. Don't uh, enter. Don't very enter emotional inside. moment. Please, don't enter inside. Uh, a shining light, cut short, a bright star. And it's so down like best. a flower. If like it were a shadow and never continuous in one. In the midst of life, we are in death, of whom may we seek for succor, but you, O oh Lord. 
Yet, O oh Lord, God most holy, O oh Lord most mighty, O oh holy and most merciful Savior, deliver us not into the bitter pains of eternal death. You know, Lord, the secret of our heart. Close not your merciful ears for our prayers, but hear us, Lord most holy, O oh God most mighty, O oh holy and merciful Savior, you most worthy, God eternal. So far us not at our last hour for any pain of death to fall away from me, from you. Only the truth life we have spoken. Only the seed that on earth we have sown, this we pass on. Fruit of the harvest and what we have done. May the Lord bless us. Amen. very emotional moment here for this symmetry now um, family members no be hold back their tears loved ones classmates everybody they had broken pains where they no be express as they cry hoping that for as much as it please our heavenly in father in his wise providence to take unto himself our beloved daughter, sister, colleague, and friend, line of Satolu Lopez, Arotile. We therefore commit her body to the ground, head to head, ashes to ashes, dust to dust, looking forward to this, to the blessed hope and the glorious appearing of our great God and Savior Jesus Christ. We shall change the body of our humiliation and fashion it anew in the likeness of his body of glory, according to the working of his mighty power, wherewith he is able even to subdue all things unto himself. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the God of peace, who brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus Christ, the great shepherd of the sheep, by the blood of his son and covenant, equip you with everything good that you may do his will, working in you that, that which is pleasant in his sight. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Son, the Holy Spirit, with you now and forevermore. Amen. I request to recommend that Jesus. Let us go to prayer. Father, we thank you for having been with us on this. We thank you, Father, for all that has taken place here. Shortly, we shall be leaving this place back to our respective destinations. We commit our journeys into your hands. As we go for here safely, so shall we return safely in the name of Jesus Christ. Once again, we pray for the family of the deceased, that the Holy Spirit will continue to comfort and strengthen them. Thank you, Father, for hearing us. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. Her sister, they bid her their final farewell in tears, in pain, and heartbroken. Their hearts, they say their hearts don't break to pieces. They don't expect the loss of this, their loved one, and they're still there in shock.
Sorry. Sorry. It is well, sorry. Having committed the body of our late colleague, late flying officer, Tolulope Alotone to Mother Earth, it is now time for laying of wreath in honor of the departed. First to lay the wreath this morning is the guest of honor, the Honorable Minister of Defense, Major General oh. Bashu Mabashu retired. <laughs> Next is the Honorable Minister of Humanitarian Affairs. 
Affairs, Disaster Management and Social Development, Hajia Sadia Umar.
made to all a late flying officer for the Northern Ireland Senate. Okay, uh, we don't see how uh, the, the military honor, and sir. the guests of honor, honor are here. Your Excellency, um, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen. Next on the program is moment. the firing of volleys, which is the 21 gun salute so now in honor of the late gallant officer. Serving military officers and warrant officers in uniform will be expected to rise and salute upon the release of the volley shots. May I also inform our civilian guests not to panic when the 21 gun salute commences, as this is just a military procedure at a military burial of this nature in honor of our fallen hero, the firing of volleys. I request to please rise. Any moment from now, the river will be started. The river.
they wish to ask you, they please be seated. The distinguished guest ladies and gentlemen, next item on the program is the vote of thanks. May I now most respectfully invite the Director of Administration, Headquarters Nigerian Air Force, Air Vice Marshal A.G. Pani, to deliver the vote of thanks. Did you hear you, sir? Hello, Nigeria uh, women, uh, Minister of Women Affairs. You know, say, when Arotile being put on, when she being, um, they enroll her into the, this thing, we know, say, you did here to put on the guest of honor, sir. And I still say, you did very pain this morning. Please permit um, me to stand morning. the already established protocol. Now they don't lay her to rest. That's How why it's only occasion. We thank the Almighty God for making it possible for us to be here today in honor of our fallen hero. It is my honor to thank all our distinguished guests for finding time out of their tight schedules to honor us with your presence at this moment of our grief. This show of respect, no doubt, is a reflection of the love you all have for flight, for late flight, Arotile. The both of us, interrupting us, but I'll come to you. Uh, it's a painful one for many of us here. I don't talk saying a painful and uh, thing for sympathizers. Uh, we condole with the Nigerian government, with women, right as a minister of women affairs. We know say this thing pain you, but we'll come to you for another interview. Make this thing finish. Well, these are Nigerians who come here. We see how people don't come here. Now, both of times then they now, out his um, many as persons soon as here, he the news. they say, um, and the dead, governor of now they don't lay her to rest, they with pray, us. say, may God comfort their family, here with us. may God uh, Thank you, console in, in mother and father, we appreciate and also members other members of, the National of his family, family. And, so and ministers of Federal Republic who made our time to lay rich so at the headquarters of the Nigerian Air Force in honor of our departed colleague. Our special thanks goes to the guest of honor, the Honorable Minister of Defense, Major General Bashir Magashi, the Chief of Defense Staff, Service Chiefs, and all other distinguished dignitaries at this ceremony. May I equally say a big thank you to all the officers and men who contributed in no small measure to making this ceremony a success. To the deceased family, we pray that the Almighty God will grant you the fortitude to bear the grossly irreplaceable loss. But be rest assured that your daughter has left behind an indelible mark in the history of time as the first ever Nigerian female helicopter combat pilot. She committed herself to the service of Nigeria and, the, and indeed humanity. It is our prayer that the good Lord will comfort you all. I will not end this vote of thanks without appreciating our compassionate and caring Chief of the Air Staff, SB Albert, DFS, for providing the Nigerian Air Force with able and purposeful leadership and providing the resources for this defeating barrier. We say thank you, sir. As we conclude interment of flying officer Arotile, we pray for the soul of this ace Nigerian female combat pilot of the Nigerian Air Force, who has contributed meaningfully to the eradication of criminal elements in the country during her brief stay with us. We mourn you, but God Almighty is the purpose of everybody on earth. Be rest assured that you did not die in vain. May your gentle soul continue to rest in peace. I thank you all for coming. Safe journey, and may God bless you as you return to your virus destination. Thank you. Okay, uh, Honorable Minister, um, I did speak for Pigeon because you report for BBC Pigeon now. Um, we know, say, you'll be one of those that decorate her and celebrate her life. Um, Give us a brief 
encounter with her when you be meet her which experience you get with Arotile burial ceremony uh, may I humbly request that we rise as the band renders the national anthem for departure which will be in reverse order thank you the band I'm really sorry, huh? Yeah, that's what I'm Thank you, guests of honor. Thank you, Your Excellency. Thank you, very okay, distinguished um, guests, ladies and gentlemen, for honoring us on this very solemn occasion. I had been the lead master of ceremony, Group Captain Ernest Bassi, Director of Music, Headquarters Nigerian Air Force, and on behalf of my colleague, Flight Lieutenant Tonga, I say thank you all, wish you all a very safe journey to your respective destinations. Thank you. Okay, um, this is not the end of the program here today. Uh, we don't see how Nigeria honor um, the flying officer, 24-year-old Arotile, where die, and how Nigerians don't praise her, how uh, the people where they here, the military, everybody don't talk well about her. Um, the Minister of uh, Women Affairs just tell me, say, by the time she de decorate her, she been tell her, say, she de look forward for the day where she go do her wedding. But that dream cut short, with pains, heart bleeding, people crying, tension of hopelessness, of pain and anger on top of how she carried that. This from the BBC News Pigeon crew here, where they tell Arotile good night. And as she represents the country as a shining star, as she go out there, make it also continue to shine, to honor her beloved country. This now how we go end the broadcast from the National Military Cemetery here from Abuja. But before I go also, I want also to show now, say, aside Arotile, many Nigerian gallant men, women, also don't die when they're buried for the cemetery. Many of them die because then they fight for their country, because then they fight to protect their country. And from us here, BBC crew, Pigeon crew, we say good night to the gallant officer Arotile Tolulokbe. <laughs>